All right, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And this is my testimony. So growing up in early childhood, the extent of my Christianity was that I sometimes prayed before I ate. I started going to church consistently when I was in middle school. Um, and early on, you know, I accepted Christ and, and did that whole thing. Raised my hand. You know, I was a Christian, right? And in my early middle and early high school years with church and different campus ministries, a little bit of Bible reading on my own, I started to be convicted over my sin, but I would justify it because I didn't see myself as bad as other people around me. I thought I was good because I didn't fornicate, I didn't curse, I wasn't a pathological liar, and I thought I had my priorities in order. But in reality, my heart was filled with lust, and in my private time would watch pornography. My speech consisted of coarse jokes. Many times I would deceptively withhold the whole truth from my parents and teachers when it came to different talents and abilities rather than attributing those things to God I would steal glory from myself and all in all I cared more about pleasing my parents my friends getting attention from girls boosting my own ego school sports and music more than I cared about God but by God's grace I was brought to a point where I recognized the severity of my sin to the point that I deserved hell for it so I did what I thought I was supposed to do. Recommit my life and try to stop sinning. And it wasn't too long until I realized that I couldn't stop. But because of my shame and because of my pride, I wouldn't seek help from other people. So I stayed in a continuous cycle in which I'd feel like I'd have to do the thing again, say the prayer again, go up to the front again every week, but then fail and keep hitting uh, a reset button. And though I cannot recall an exact light bulb moment, sometime in the latter end of high school, uh, coming into college, I realized and submitted to the fact that I couldn't change myself and I needed God to change me. Amen. Amen. And rather than looking to my own action for the assurance of my salvation, I looked to Christ and his life and death on my behalf. So to move on, uh, in different campus ministries at UCF, I got involved with one called the Church of Christ. And if you're not, you're not familiar, one of their beliefs is that you must be baptized in order to be saved. And in meeting one-on-one -on -one with one of their leaders, we went back and forth on this issue. I disagreed. He kept trying to push it on me. And we'd go back and forth week after week, throwing Bible verses at each other to try to prove who was right. Because I did not believe that you had to be baptized in order to be saved. That argument broke out, but then coming out of that, I realized I need to get baptized. Uh, not as a means of salvation, but out of obedience to God. Amen. So on July 22nd, 2018, I was baptized. From that time on, when it came to reading the word and other things, I began to develop more biblical convictions and see more of the error in my church and the other ministries that I was attending. But because of my own ignorance and the, the shallowness and the way things were left undefined, I couldn't put my finger exactly on what those errors were. But in God's providence, in January of 2020, an old teammate who was back in town put me on the Grace to You app. <laughs> and for the first time, or at least the first time since having ears to hear, I had heard reformed and expository preaching. And God used men like MacArthur, Bodie Bach, and Paul Washer to reveal biblical truth clearly and confirm different convictions that were being developed, but with specificity. Amen. Also, during this time, you guys remember COVID was a thing. And, uh, and my church had stopped meeting in person. Um, I had tried to work some of those things out. Uh, but things weren't working out, so I knew I had to find a new place. But, you know, quarantine, so I wasn't going to go somewhere new. Until October of last year, I got COVID. And coming out of my isolation, I used that time to start looking for a reformed church. And I came across this website, uh, went to RBF that Thursday, and I've been here ever since. And I am so thankful to the Lord for His providence and the grace that He's shown to this body of the years. So before I go, I want to leave you guys with three applications. One, for those of you trying to conquer sin in your own strength, stop. 
You, you are not more pious. You are not more spiritual for trying to do things on your own. In fact, you're a fool and you need to repent because you think you actually can't. Yeah. So yeah. please humble yourself and look to Christ. Number two, and this applies to all unbelievers, but this is particularly for those that are younger than me. Do not delay, do not wait, but repent and believe now. Amen. Understand the justice of God. You will not pay for the sin of your parents, but also you will not be justified through the faith of your parents either. Amen. So if you individually have not turned from your sin and believed on Christ for your salvation, you are not saved. As Pastor mentioned earlier, there is no protective covenant deal for you here. Either you are in Christ and the wrath of God has been satisfied on your behalf, or you are out of Christ and the wrath of God still abides on you. Amen. So do not delay, do not wait, turn and believe in the gospel. Amen. And lastly, and this goes to everyone, praise God. I know in my introduction I referred to this as my testimony, but the reality of it is the only thing that I contributed to my salvation was all the sin that needed to be forgiven. So this is much less my testimony, much more a testimony of the Lord's goodness to me. So all glory goes to Him and praise God for His saving grace.